My name is Jesse McKee, and I work as the head of strategy for a nonprofit called 221A. And so we're based in uh, Vancouver, uh, Musqueam, Squamish, and Swayland Tooth territories. Um, and what 221A does is we're a cultural nonprofit. My training is actually, and my background is more as a curator of contemporary art, design architecture, a writer, a researcher, a political scientist. Those are all the hats I've worn in my life. But over the past couple of years, I've been reskilling and diving into um, the digital space. So it can be done, even if it's not your, your original training. So don't be afraid of these computers. And we've been very lucky because we've been supported by federal government, by agencies like the Canada Council for the Arts, to do really experimental research and learning in this space to figure out what does the culture sector need? What does the education sector need? What does the nonprofit sector need at large? So I'm happy to speak to all of you today. And one of the things we've been looking at since at least 2019 through the support of partners like that is, is things like blockchain technology, which we all maybe know a little bit about, especially over the past couple of years, like cryptocurrency and NFTs and that sort of thing. But the concept or the orientation or the notion that I want to get underneath all of that stuff is called decentralization. And the trend that we're going to see more and more emerge as we go deeper into this space that is called Web3. So we could say the second era of the web was that read and write era where we could create our own content on platforms like YouTube, on Facebook, all those things we've been talking about so far, like digital marketing. However, in Web3, what we're looking at is a lot of these platforms and a lot of this infrastructure underneath these platforms. So those cloud services, that hardwiring actually is going to start to move outside of these data centers that corporations like Google or Amazon might run in warehouses somewhere like Kansas, where it's nice and cold, where, like, where the cooling isn't as expensive. But actually what's happening is all of this infrastructure is going to start to be dispersed into smaller and smaller spaces. And we're going to start to become operators of our own infrastructure. And we think that is a bonus, maybe not for all things, but for some things. So the question isn't necessarily, is centralization good or decentralization good? I think the question is, what can decentralize technology be used for and what can centralized technology be used for. So similarly, like in previous eras of nonprofit work or civil society work, we would ask the questions, is this capitalist? Is this socialist? Of course, the answer is never that clear. It's never that easy. And it's going to be the same as we go forward into the future. So what 221A, what we're doing is we're trying to do some experiments and looking at where does civil society connect with this decentralized infrastructure or this decentralized internet that's being built. Um, through Web3. And so what this means is all the compute power for your cloud services, for your AI, for managing your blockchains, all of these sorts of things will become easier to operate on the SME level, so a small medium enterprise level. We started with one project, which is called the Mesh Network, and that's developing a free access Wi-Fi network. It's going to originate in East Van, and that was piloted by a fellow of 221A, Christina Battle who's an artist. And so what we've started to do is we started to plant these free Wi-Fi nodes in public gardens. So starting with our garden at Union and Gore Street in Vancouver, and then there's another garden run by a group called Living Systems Network up in, up in Mount Pleasant. And so these are places where anybody can connect to these networks and start to expand the Wi-Fi out. So it's a community-run, community-controlled Wi-Fi space that allows free access. So that's one example. Another example of what we're trying to do, which is a much heavier lifting task, is we're starting something called the Node Library. So we're looking at the ways that we can start to operate some of this decentralized hardware and this decentralized infrastructure for the public sector. So blockchains, AI compute, public storage, and new networks for things called like interplanetary file system or RWEED, where your data isn't kept in one location, but it's actually kept in many locations at once. So it's, it's healthy. It's replicatable and it's persistent. And I always start to tell people that data is less, of, think about data as less about something that's going to be hardwired into a stone and something that more has like a living will, like a fungus or like a mushroom or something like this. And it's going to propagate and it's going to persist. So if the liveness is going to continue to be with us. If you want to have a look around at those projects that I spoke about, please get in touch if you have any questions about your decentralized futures.